The diagram represents the pattern of waves that have a frequency of 30. What is frequency, guys? Can we remember? Well, frequency is number of waves per second. Remember that. So that means that in one second, think about this, in one second, there will be 30 waves. And a wave goes the up and the down part. That is a wave. So in this question, there are actually two waves that we can see. Here's the second one. Okay. So frequency means number of waves per second. So in one second, if you were standing over here, you would see 30 of those waves coming past. So they're moving quite quick. First question, define the term transverse. Before we define, let's understand it. So in grade 10, we've learned about two types of waves, right? We've learned about transverse and we've learned about longitudinal, longitudinal. With transverse, this was like when I explained it, I explained it like the Mexican wave when you're at a sports ground. When you're at a sports stadium and you've got a Mexican wave, if you've been part of that, you know that the wave moves round and round and round. But what are the people doing? The people are not moving round and round and round. They're moving up and down. So the transverse wave was the one where the particles go up and down, for example, but the wave went left or right, okay? So if the wave goes this way and the particles go this way, there was a 90 degree. Remember, let me, let me draw that a bit better. There was the 90 degree between them. So the transverse wave is when the particle moves at perpendicularly to the direction of the wave. So the definition is a wave where particles in the medium move perpendicularly to the direction of propagation of the wave. So we're just saying that it's where the particles move perpendicular to the direction of the wave. Okay, now it says label points A, B, and C. So we know that A is the bottom and C is the top. So let's just say when life gets tough, you feel like you're in the trough. <laughs> Never actually used that before. So A is going to be a trough. And then the other one, which is the one at the top, is the crest. When life gets tough, you feel like you're in the, sorry, when life gets rough, you feel like you're in a trough. Or you can say tough, tough, rough, trough, whatever, it will help, right? And then B, well, you see B is going from the same position to the same kind of position. We call that a wave length. So B is the wave length. This question, how much time has elapsed while the wave moved from R to T? Okay, so can you see that R to T is one wave? So let's think about this. We know that the frequency is 30 waves per second. So think about that. In one second, there are 30 waves coming past. But what we wanna know is how many, how, how long does it take for one wave? Because if you go from R to T, that is one wave. That is only one wave. So remember that frequency is equal to one over period and period is equal to one over frequency. Well, what we need to calculate is the period, which is the number of seconds for one wave. And so we can say T is equal to one over 30. And so if you work that out, you'll get 0 0.03 seconds. This question says, are the points R and S on the wave in phase? Well, no, they're not, but let me explain. Remember, we've spoken about this before. If you look carefully, um, R, if you look at the line going to the right of point R, it's going up. If you look at the line to the right of point S, it's going down. So they're not in the same kind of position. But if you had to look at R and T, 
So look, so look at R and T. So with R, it's about to the, the the line's about to go up, and if you look at T on the right, it's about to go up. If you look at U, it's about to go down. If you look at this, okay, we're not going to look at that one. Um, so you can see that these two are in the same phase, and this one here is about to go down. So these two are also in the same phase. These two. And so remember that for two points to be in phase, they have to be separated by a a certain number of wavelengths. For example, from R to T, how many wavelengths is that? That's one. But if you go from R to S, that's not even a wavelength. If you go from S to U, that is a wavelength. Check, it goes down and then up. As long as it can go down and up or up and down, that's a wavelength. What about, let's say uh, we made this called V, then check here, one, two. So as long as it's a as long as it's a certain number of wavelengths, then they are in phase. But if you look at R and S, that's not even, that's like a quarter of a wavelength. So we will say no, um, let's say R and S are not separated by a whole number of wavelengths. Like it's not a whole number, it's a quarter, okay? And then this one, this question says, calculate the speed of the wave. Now we've looked at waves and we found different formulas for speed. One of them is this formula over here, and that's probably the one we're gonna use. But then also keep in mind that for waves, um, we don't really use it, but sometimes they'll also ask you to use um, distance over, sometimes you could also use distance over time. But they haven't really spoken about time in this question, but we have spoken about frequency and then wavelength. Remember that this is wavelength, wave length. So we already know the frequency. The frequency is 30, they gave that to us. And the wavelength is the distance of one wave. Now, they haven't given us that one, but that's okay because they've given us this one. As long as it goes from a place that's the same to another place that's the same, that is a wavelength, that is one wavelength, okay? And so that is four meters. So we're just gonna say multiply by four, and that's gonna give us 120. Now, what are the units of velocity or speed? Um, meters per second, so m dot s minus one. 